Hi, I'm Elaine Weishottle, one of the children's librarians at the Milton Public Library. And I'm back today with my story hat for more tales from the story hat. I have a couple of African folk tales for you this month. And uh, got a little buzzy thing here on my hat. He's a bee, I think. My story is not about a bee, but it is about something that buzzes, sort of. It's about a mosquito. It's called Why Mosquitoes Buzz in People's Ears. Now, it happened one day that Mosquito ran into his friend, Iguana, who was strolling along beside a river. Oh! said the mosquito. Iguana, you'll never believe what I just saw. Try me, said Iguana. I just saw a farmer digging up yams that were as big as me. What? said Iguana. What is a mosquito compared to a yam? I'd rather be dead than listen to such nonsense. And he picked up two sticks from the ground and put one in each ear and went off on his way. Mick, 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 mick. Well, Iguana strolled along and it happened that his path crossed that of his friend Python. Good morning, Iguana, called out Python. But Iguana, with the sticks in his ears, didn't hear him, and he just kept on walking, bobbing his head as he went, bottom and bottom and bottom and. <gasps> oh dear, thought Python, what's wrong with Iguana? He must be mad at me about something. I wonder if he's plotting some evil. I had better hide. And so he looked around for a good spot, and the first place he saw was the hole of a rabbit. And so Python, wasu-wusu, wasu-wusu, went slithering down the rabbit's hole. Well, when the rabbit saw the Python coming down at her, she was terrified and she took off out the back exit from her hole and went running through the forest. Well, as it happened, Crow, was flapping around up in the trees and saw Rabbit running. Now that was something Rabbit did not do during the daytime. It was dangerous to be out in the daytime. And so Crow decided that there must be some great danger. And it was his job to inform all of the forest of the danger. And so he began to fly through going, to warn everyone. Now, Monkey heard Crow calling and Monkey thought, oh my goodness, that sounds dreadful. There must be some great danger. And Monkey started swinging through the trees willy-nilly and calling out as he went to help warn everyone of whatever this great danger was. And as he swung through the trees, he caught a branch, a little branch of a tree that was dead and it broke off and fell down and landed on Owl's nest. And the little tree limb struck one of the baby owls and killed it. Now Mother Owl was away from home. Usually by this time of the day, she would be back, but she had stayed out a little longer than usual to catch one last tasty morsel for her babies. And when she returned to the nest, she was horrified to see that one of her little baby owlets was dead. Oh, oh, she wailed. And the other babies told her, it was Monkey, he was swinging by and he dropped this on us. Oh, wailed Mother Owl again. And she was so sad, 
She was so sad that she just sat there in her nest all day. Now, usually Mother Owl, at the end of her hunting, would call out to the east to wake the sun so that it would come up and bring the day. But the next morning, Mother Owl was too sad. She had not gone hunting all night. She had just sat in her nest. And so, since Mother Owl did not call to the sun, it did not rise and the day did not come. And soon all the other animals became aware of this and they were very worried. And they went to King Lion and told him and said, Mother Owl has not wakened the sun yet. What shall we do? Well, King Lion called for all of the animals to come before him. And then he sent someone to bring Mother Owl, for she did not answer the summons. And when she arrived, King Lion said, Mother Owl, why have you not called to waken the sun? Oh, she said, Monkey has killed one of my baby owls, and I am too sad to wake the sun. Oh, said King Lion. So it is Monkey's fault. And he called for Monkey. Monkey came before him, trembling and chattering. Yes, King Lion, he said, what is it? What is this you have done? You have killed one of Mother Owl's babies, and now she is too unhappy to wake the sun, and so the day will not come. Oh, but it's, it wasn't my fault. It was an accident, said the monkey. I heard the crow calling, caw, caw, saying that there was great danger. And I knew I had to help. And, and as I was going, I accidentally knocked this branch down. It wasn't my fault, truly it wasn't. It was crow. Ah, said King Lion. So it was the crow who startled the monkey, who knocked down the limb who killed, that killed the baby owl, so that Mother Owl will not wake the sun, so that the day can come. And King Lion called for Crow. Crow approached, and being a crow, he was very blunt. Not my fault, he said. I saw a rabbit. She was running, running, running like she should not be in the daylight. And so I knew that there was great danger. So. I started calling. Ah, said King Lion. So it was Crow, it was Mother, I mean, it was Rabbit who startled Crow, who startled Monkey, who knocked down the branch that killed the baby owl. Hmm, let's get Rabbit up here, said King Lion. So Rabbit came hopping up slowly and stood trembling with her paws up in front of her. What, what is it, King Lion? Why did you go running, running in the sunlight like you should not do? Oh, oh, well, it wasn't my fault, but Python came into my hole. He came down into my hole and I was terrified and I ran from him. Oh, said King Lion. It was Python who scared Rabbit, who startled Crow, who fooled Monkey who knocked down the branch that killed the baby owl so that mother owl will not wake the sun so that the day can come. He called for Python. Python, wasu, wusu, wasu, wusu, came slithering through the grass and immediately started talking. Oh, King Lion, it was not my fault. I'm sure Iguana was planning some mischief against me for he would not talk to me. And so I was just trying to hide when I went down in the rabbit's hole. Ah, said King Lion, it was the iguana. Okay, the iguana who scared the python, who scared the rabbit, who scared the crow, who scared the monkey. And now Mother Owl won't wake the sun so the day can come. 
Now, Iguana had not come to the meeting. Remember the sticks in his ears? He hadn't heard the summons. So Antelope was sent to go find Iguana and bring him back. And when the animal saw Iguana come along following Antelope with the two sticks in his ears, they all started laughing. Oh, goodness. King Lion reached out and poop, poop. He pulled the sticks out of Iguana's ears. Why are you doing this? What mischief have you plotted against Python? Python? Python's my friend. I wasn't plotting mischief. I just put these sticks in my ears because, because Mosquito told me such a lie. I just couldn't bear to listen to him anymore. Oh, said King Lion. So it was Mosquito who irritated Iguana, who scared Python, who scared the rabbit, who scared the crow, who scared the monkey, who knocked down the branch that killed the baby owlet so that Mother Owl will not call and wake up the sun so that the day can come. It was Mosquito. And all of the animals started calling, punish the mosquito, punish the mosquito. When Mother Owl heard that, she was satisfied at last. And she turned her head to the east and called, whoo, whoo, whoo. And the sun woke and the day came. Mosquito never went to the council for he had been lurking in some bushes and he had heard everything that had been said. Mosquito hid inside a curled up leaf and stayed there until all of the other animals went about their business. But to this day, Mosquito feels guilty for what happened all because of him. And so he flies about and comes buzzing up to people's ears to say, Zee! 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 Are they still mad at me? Are they still mad at me? Zee! 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 Are they still mad at me? And whenever he does that, he gets an honest answer. Kapow! And that is why mosquitoes buzz in people's ears. Well, mosquitoes aren't the only things, only insects that fly around. And they're not the only, well, I'll say insect or bug or whatever, that show up quite a lot in African folk tales. Because a lot of the African folk tales are about a character called Anansi or spider. And this is a story of why spiders live in the ceiling. Now, once upon a time, it happened, as it does every year, that the rains came. And it rained, and it rained, and it rained. But this year, it seemed to be raining even more than usual. In the evenings, it sounded like thunder against the roof. It beat against the trees and tore down the leaves. Friendly little rivers grew deep and wide and overflowed their banks. All of the animals were worried. In fact, some were very frightened and many were getting hungry. The rabbit could not go out and find meadows of grass to eat. There was too much rain. It was beating everything down. Elephant could not stroll through the trees, plucking off the new tender shoots. And even spider, lazy spider, spider who had not bothered to plant his field or to set his fish traps, spider had nothing 
whatsoever to eat. Well, finally, one day, the rain stopped. And Hungry Spider immediately raced out and down the wide path in the, in the trees, heading towards the river to get some food. Now it happened that Leopard was out too. Normally, Leopard would only be out in the evening hunting, but as bad as the rain had been, Leopard had not been able to find anything to eat for quite a while either. And so now he was out hunting in the daytime. And so it happened that Leopard and Spider ran right into each other on the path. Ah, thought the leopard. Hmm. Now, normally he would be looking for something big and juicy to eat, but he was so hungry that he thought even Spider looked pretty good. So he decided to be very friendly. Hello there, Spider, he said. How are you faring in all of this wet weather? Now, Spider might be lazy. In fact, he was. And he might be naughty. In fact, he often was, but he was not stupid. And he knew not to trust that silly, sweet voice of the leopard. Oh, I'm doing well enough, said Spider, but um, 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 I'm very busy right now and I must be about my business. And he quickly jumped behind a bush and ran into some leaves and Leopard couldn't find him for all he looked and looked and looked. Well, oh dear, thought Spider. I wonder what I should do. Leopard had seemed to give up and go away, but he wasn't sure. For indeed, Leopard had been thinking I know what I'll do. I'll go to that naughty spider's house and I will wait inside for him. And when he comes home, I will eat him. And if he's bringing any food home, I'll eat that too. And off he went. Spider, meanwhile, went on his way down towards the river where he took some fish out of some other people's fish traps and gobbled them down. And then he went to a farm and he ate a big cassava. Mmm, it tasted so good. For it was the custom that if someone had no food, they could help themselves and no one would mind. Finally, when Spider's belly was full, he sat down and thought, what else should I do? Ah, let's see, I'll go visit my other friends. And so he started wandering around and he visited where all of his friends were, hoping that the day would go by and he would not run into Leopard again. But finally, he ran out of friends to visit and uh, it was starting to get dark. And Spider thought, mm, I'd better head for home. It's clouding up again and sure enough, it started to rain again. Spider trudged along and as he approached his house, he thought, I'm, I'm not sure. I wonder if Leopard is here. And he looked around on the ground to see if there were any prints. And he listened very carefully to see if he could hear any noise, but he heard nothing and he saw nothing, but remember, Spider's not stupid and he did not trust Leopard. So finally, he had an idea. And as he walked along, he started whistling just as if he hadn't a care in the world. And as he came within sight of his little banana leaf house, he called out, Ho! My banana leaf house, how are you? There was no answer. Hmm. Well, that's very odd, 
said Spider loudly. When I call greetings to my little banana leaf house, it always answers me. I wonder what's wrong with it. Maybe I should ask again. And so once more, he loudly called. Ho, my, my little banana leaf house. How are you? And a voice came back to him saying, Oh, hi, Mr. Spider. I am just fine. Come on in. Ha, 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 laughed Spider. I hear you, Leopard. I know you're in there. You've given yourself away. He heard the Leopard growl. And before Leopard could leap out of the house, Spider raced through a window and went all the way up to the ceiling and hid among the leaves and fronds of the banana plant from which his house was made. And Leopard couldn't get to him no matter how he tried. Finally, Leopard gave up and went off on his way to seek food elsewhere. Spider up in his ceiling, was very happy. He was full, he was dry, and he was safe. And so he decided to just stay there. And so Spider stayed up in his ceiling. And to this very day, spiders live on the ceiling by spiders live in the ceiling a spider story from africa i hope you enjoy stories from the story cat i love telling stories and i'm always glad to share them with you come see us at the library we have a lot of new programs going on, and we have quite a few special programs that we'll be having during February Vacation Week at the library, and you'll be sure to want to sign up for many of those. Come for stories, come for special speakers, come for crafts, and don't forget our story walk on the front patio. You can read the book about the trouble with yetis. We've got that out there this month. So thank you for joining me for Stories from the Story Hat.